Welcome to Cloud City Conversations, a podcast all about our love for Star Wars and where all forms of Star Wars fans are welcome. Today, we have the amazing saber-twirling TikToker, Hannah EMP. Welcome to the podcast, Hannah. Thank you for inviting me. This is super fun to be on. I love podcasts. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is going to be great. All right. So on this podcast, we always start with a little introduction of how you discovered Star Wars, whether you discovered it when you were a child or maybe even a year ago. Can you tell us that story of how you began to love this franchise? Okay, so my dad was a huge fan. Like <laughs> 19, he was born in the 74s, so he was right there with Star Wars. So he was oh, wow. always a big fan. Oh, yeah. So I grew up with Star Wars everywhere between the original Ewok villages, the original at at. I dressed up as Boba Fett for Halloween <laughs> when I was like four. So it's kind of just been a, a thing that's been a part of my life. But since quarantine happened, that's when like the big obsession started. Mm. So since quarantine, I've gotten it really into it again. Nice. It's funny you say your dad was born in 74. Yeah. That's where my, that's the same year my uncle crazed Star Wars fan or <laughs> yeah, that, that came out. I don't know, whatever. But my uncle's a huge Star Wars fan. That's the year he was born and he saw the, the reason I know this, cause I know he saw um, the original Star Wars in 1977. Oh, wow. So, yeah. It's, maybe it's four. something to do with the 74. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a little bit of coincidence. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people became obsessed with Star Wars during quarantine. Like a lot of, oh, yeah. A lot of people changed a lot in quarantine. I think it's amazing how being alone with our thoughts can like just spark these things, like uh, whether they're Star Wars or even like political movements, you know? It's, that's oh cool. yeah. Um quarantine had everyone doing random things at random times. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I it was for me, it was the Force Awakens that sparked up this huge Star Wars obsession again. Cause I was obsessed when I was a little kid. And then um I kind of like pushed it down. I'm like, oh, that's really nerdy. No one, no one likes Star Wars nerds. And then they <laughs> became cool. And I'm like, all right, I can come out of my shell a little bit. Yeah, cool. But yeah. So I, this is probably the most important question I'm going to ask you. How do you rank your Star Wars movies? You can start from the bottom. You can start from the top. Oh, let's rank them real quick. Th- this will be a fun one. So th- I'm going to go least favorite to favorite. Okay. And I don't, I hope no one gets mad. So at nope, the bottom, no one's going to get mad. <laughs> okay. Um, for the bottom for me is Rogue One. Don't get me wrong. Really? I love really. Yeah. So I love all of the movies. Like it's okay, really hard for me. It's really hard for me to like rate them. Like they're all like my top five. They're mm-hmm. all squished there. Um, so then it's Rogue One, The Phantom Menace, which yeah. I, I don't know. I like the Phantom Menace. I, I think it's because like it's the start of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, after Phantom Menace, it is The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it's Attack of the Clones. I I have a weird obsession with Attack of the Clones because it was a 2002 it's movie and I was valid. So it's just it's a mental thing. And then The Rise of Skywalker after that. Mm-hmm. Which one am I forgetting? I'm forgetting a lot. I'm trying to rank them mentally to see what they look like. Um, after Rise of Skywalker, it is Return of the Jedi. And then A New Hope, Solo. Empire Strikes Back, or no, The Force Awakens, Empire Strikes Back, and then Revenge of the Sith. Solo's fourth. That's, ooh. Oh, I love Solo. Yeah. It, I didn't watch it when it first came out. At mm. first, I was like, it's just a side story, like, uh, whatever. But then I watched it, and I was like, this is a really cool side story. I like this one. Yeah, I think I saw it twice in theaters. Oh, I, mean, I can, I can oh. imagine seeing it theaters that'd be so cool <laughs> i just yeah. watched it on Disney plus oh really so you didn't you saw it not too long ago yeah i saw oh, it wow. like last year i think which i felt bad because i was like dang i'm slacking as a star wars fan but then i was like i am slacking this is a good movie honestly i think alden einreich did he he crushed it 
he crushed it as Han Solo. I didn't when I first heard it was announced and that they were recasting Han, I was really bitter. I was like, this is gonna be awful. I'm gonna hate every bit of it. And then I saw the cast of oh, Donald yeah. Glover as Lando. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch the movie. One of my favorite actors is in this movie now, Donald Glover. And I ended up liking Alden's portrayal of Han more than I like Donald Glover's portrayal of Lando, which is weird to say, right? I don't yeah. know. I'm I, and then like since the last Jedi, I like the last Jedi, but um, I, you the fans' reaction to it, and then they boycotted Solo, and it really sucks because I really want more Solo, and I think Disney's like, oh, they don't want Solo. It did awful, but I, I feel know. like most of the fans like it. I know it's such an un- to me it's underrated because mm-hmm. I see it for low and then that's why I feel so bad about putting Rogue One so low is because like it's another side story that everyone loves and I always feel bad when I put it down there because it's good oh, yeah. it's just like the other one's just a little bit more but yeah I like I just I love all the movies and it sucks yeah. that the fans boycott them because like I'm a sequels fan Same. And <laughs> I get so much hate for being a sequels fan but it's like it's star wars and i don't care yeah. if you don't like it. if i like it that's me like i like it so don't come at me because you have a problem with it <laughs> yeah that's all that's that's kind of what this podcast is all about right so like we all have our own opinions about star wars but we can sit here and like agree to disagree like um you have last jedi so low when rogue one i have rogue one and last jedi towards the top of my list but i'm not gonna be like yeah. look at you and you <laughs> last jedi hate and yeah i'm not yeah. that's not what that podcast this podcast is about but yeah what are, so what is it about rogue one that you put so low just because it's a side story or yeah to me i i don't get me wrong I, again i love it like it was really good but it was I, maybe I just need to rewatch it because it's been almost like two mm-hmm. years, three years since I've watched oh. it. So I need to rewatch it again and remember all what happens in it. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just because it was a side story and my mind just kind of blanked it a little. <laughs> so I'm- it's it's kind of interesting because I've heard I've either seen people put it towards the bottom or towards the very very top, like second, third, first, even. Oh so yeah, it's really. I, I don't know. It's really interesting to hear everyone's opinion on it, honestly. So, okay. like, there's someone I was talking to on the podcast, and uh, people listening to the podcast will hear his opinion later. But um, he was telling me about how he didn't he didn't like Rogue One, and he was giving me the reasons. And it was like, it. What did he? I'm trying to think exactly what he said because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, they kind of don't the characters there's no building on the characters like there's no character development they just kind of do things and i was like huh Mm -hmm. and then but you watch the third act of the movie and then i think that's where most people fall in love with the movie and i was like yeah yeah yeah, i can agree with that but then at the same time i'm just i'm a sucker for Jin urso and k2so man i'm just yeah bomb ass characters oh yeah I know, like, that's how I am with, like, Kira. Like, I love Kira. I want to see more. I know, I do too. I want to see more of Kira. And then I was going to say I wanted to say see more of Jin, but we can't see more of her. <laughs> I mean, we can. It would just we be can. before Rogue One. It, it has, yeah, it has to be a little bit before Rogue, maybe a lot before Rogue One. Get a, it would be cool to see, hold on, I'm throwing a theory out there. A cameo theory. Bad Batch. What if we see like Baby Jin in the care of Saw Gerrera? Like, what if Saw Gerrera shows back up some way, shape, or form, like he was in the beginning? Uh, and we get Baby Jin. Maybe. I don't know. I'm or uh, <laughs> who knows? Yeah, it, it's a cool theory. I know. I'd love to see more of Jin and all of them. It just, I don't remember much of the movie, and I think that's why I ranked it so low. I do that's need to fair. rewatch. But I've yeah. Been, yeah, I've been rewatching the movies with my girlfriend because she's never seen them, right? And it's really interesting to hear her opinion of someone who's never even been exposed to Star Wars. Like, she didn't know Luke and Leia were siblings. That's how little she's been exposed to this franchise, which she walked out of the room when she found out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, episode one's her favorite. Um, 
really? She did not like Empire Strikes Back. Um, Return of the Jedi was her favorite of the original trilogy. Um, Revenge of the Sith was iffy. She didn't like Hayden at all. So I don't know. I think we determined that like people that weren't exposed to Star Wars at such a young age, they kind of just tend not to like it that much. Oh yeah. Know. Like you yeah. have to be take like like the Jedi, you have to be taken in when you're a young child. Otherwise, you won't <laughs> be brainwashed. <Yeah. laughs> I, I will say though, um, when I was like re-watching Star Wars and getting back into Star Wars, my ultimate favorite was Attack of the Clones. Like that would get <laughs> out of the internet for me even saying that. But yeah, I used to like love, 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 love Attack of the Clones. And I think it was oh, just because like I love the Geonosis scene. I was always like, oh my god, the Coliseum scene. I have to watch it. If I saw it on if I saw it on TV at all, I'd always like click on it. I'm like, Attack of the Clones, stop everything you're doing. It's really Obi-Wan. funny you say that, right? <laughs> so Attack of the Clones was my first movie. Uh, I was exposed to Star Wars for the first time when I was around four year old, four years old. My dad and my uncle were watching Attack of the Clones in our living room. Um, and I think this was like 2005-ish. And so it was the Battle of Geonosis and the Coliseum. And then they went to obviously the big battle in John Geonosis. And me, four-year-old me was just walking through, but I had I stopped and I paused and I looked at this TV in this beautiful franchise was just before my eyes right <laughs> and I I've been just caught in the trance ever since because like even like growing up oh god I have this like really vivid memory of always going to the library and getting the attack of the clones visual dictionary and I would just look at the uh the anal- the aliens from the Coliseum and I'd look at all the geonosis stuff oh that's such a vivid memory just just hit me but yeah, oh, I yeah. really I, agree with you when it comes to the, that scene. It's like, it's really nostalgic for me. Oh yeah. I used to have the, I don't even know what it's called, but I used to have the action figures of when Padme had the scratch on her back. And then I had the little, the little uh, thing that scratched her and then the, the alien. Yeah. The I Nexu. don't, I don't. Yeah. yeah I had, and then I had the green one that Obi-Wan stabbed. So I used to always like make them run and chase after them. <laughs> I had all of them, and then I had Anakin, Obi Wan, and Padme. So I'd always just play with it and like reenact the scene. So that might also be why I had like a vivid love back mm-hmm. the clones. But yeah, and my love Star Wars <laughs> toys, the the big collection of Star Wars toys I had. I don't know if you'll know what these are, or I don't even know if many of the people listening will know what these are. But they're the the tactics. Um, it's the game. They're kind of like they're really animated um kind of figures where they have big guns and like you can actually put stuff in and shoot them and they ha- they're on like yeah. little they're on like little flat cylinders oh. and like they have like stuff on the bottom like it's a whole game like you push them up and there's like a little yeah. wheel on the bottom yeah i had so many oh. of those and i think i still have them like in an attic somewhere like i oh my gosh my dad and uncle would collect them and give me them like I like my dad would collect the um the white clone troopers and paint them and make oh, them wow. like, more collectible and it's cool. Like I remember him making like uh the 41st and like with the gray markings, not the like the green ones, but like the revenge just with gray marking. Oh, I'm just going stream <laughs> nostalgia right now on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, really fine. It's been a while since I've like thought about the toys that I had when I was a kid regarding Star Wars. Like, this is a fun memory since we're on the, like, topic of, like, toys. And this is a fun memory of why I will always love Jar Jar. Like, everyone hates Jar Jar. I love Jar Jar. But it's because I I had a Jar Jar action figure. And mind you, I was five or six. So I used to, like, chew on his ears. It sounds super weird. But I was five. But that was, like, (laughs) my... Like, I always had him with me, and I'd, like, throw him in trees and everything. I don't know. I was a weird kid. But, like, that's my love for Jar Jar, is I always had my one Jar Jar action figure I'd keep with me at all times. Man, I wish I had Star Wars, like, stuffed animals now I'm thinking about it. Like, that would be cool to, like, bring, like, an Ewok with you wherever you went. Yeah. I, I, now I'm thinking about it. I, I never had any Star Wars, like, stuffed animals. That's weird. Man. 
So I, change it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I just said I had a few, but yeah, let's. All right. Go to- so <laughs> I have a question. So you are known for twirling sabers, right? So yes. when did you learn to do that? And yeah. Because I, so, I know whenever I do it, I feel miserably. <laughs> it's totally fun. Um, so when I was, uh, it was last year, um, right when I just got kicked, or not kicked out of school, but school stopped for quarantine. Mm-hmm. So it was like March. So I just was on TikTok all the time. And then I stumbled across a user, Big Daddy Yankee. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might have seen her. She does a lot of lightsaber stuff as well. And me being me restarting all of my love for star wars i was like there's no way they actually make real lightsabers that aren't the flip out ones like no that's not (gasps) that's not about ones i was no they they don't because i used to have like the darth maul one where it'd flip out and then you could just play with it like i used to have the flip out ones i never knew they made like the actual tube ones that lit up Mm -hmm. with led so I was like, I want that. Like, that looks fun when I saw her doing it. And I always, I wanted to do color guard, but I couldn't in school. So I was like, this is my way of doing my own color guard. With I love being it. <laughs> so yeah, it, um, yeah, it started after that. Like I, it was like a year ago and a week ago, I think is when I got my first lightsaber and it just took off from there. It uh, all it's I saw one video and I was like, I love this. I didn't know they made real lightsabers. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's talk about your lightsaber collection um you've got going on. So what would you say is your most valuable lightsaber you have? My most valuable I have I have two because they're same price and they do the same thing. So I have one that's my spectrum saber and it is a Luke Skywalker hilt Ooh. or it's like a, it's a mix between Luke and Anna or not Anakin, Luke and Obi-Wan, but it's more Luke. <laughs> and then I have an Anika, uh, uh, Anakin replica that also it's, it's a nice replica and they're both ranged around $450. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, it was, gosh. It was a, yeah, it was a punch to my bank account. My bank account was very, very mad at me. But um, their Man, pro- I can feel it. Well, I, can, I, I feel your bank yeah. account's pain from over here. Yeah, my oh bank my account. The mic my- I'm using is two hundred dollars, and that that was just utter pain to me. Yeah, but I I, I have just- spent more money. I like the. Uh, the PC I have that I'm actually recording all this on and I play my games on, I spent 1500 on it. So yeah, I, I know what it's like to spend big on stuff that I don't need. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, my boyfriend bought me the Luke Obi-Wan one. So that it was like a punch to his bank account. Cause he got me up. For Christmas. <laughs> so I, like oh my goodness wait that's a lot i love it it's awesome because it's a profi so i can like mm-hmm. it has rainbow on it, it as flame on it it has like 45 different presets that it does and then i got my anakin one last month i think yeah i got it last month right before i moved and it does the same thing except this one i can edit so mm. i mess with the presets on it and add like cool color fonts and sound fonts and everything so i mean for the price it does a lot of things instead of it just lighting up one color or like a few colors it does like i have a on my anakin one i do one that's called lava lamp so it's like a rainbow lava lamp looking uh blade effect and then i got my rainbows my flame so it's, it's cool i really enjoy having both of those uh yeah what would you say is your favorite uh my favorite is the luke one the my it's my spectrum saber is the brand instead Mm -hmm. of me calling it my luke one uh because that one i can spin and it looks cool so it's a because the anakin one i can barely spin because it hurts my hand and cuts up my hand because it has a bunch of weird designs on but the spectrum saber is definitely my favorite one what other what other things do you have in your collection? I have a Kylo Ren Force of Force FX one that I won in a nice. giveaway. 
Nice. I have, yeah, it was, it was super cool. I was really surprised. I won it. I was like, wait, hold on out of 1000 people. I want it. I was like, this is a joke. It has to be no. And I don't have it. I was like, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, I have a bunch of crimson dawn lightsabers. So I have a bunch of, they connect oh. like, I don't have more replicas. They're all uh base lit ones. And this was when I was first getting into it. So I started buying those ones instead. So I have a bunch of like Darth Maul versions and then I have another brand, but I'm not going to name them because they don't deserve it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> they, are, they are an awful brand. So I mistakenly bought from them the first lightsaber I got, but they're not getting name dropped because they don't deserve it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, for people wanting to get their first lightsaber, uh, where would you recommend starting to look? Where would well, give us some brands that deserve it? Okay. Some brands that deserve it is Level Up Lightsaber and CrimsonDawn.com. Both of them are really, they're pretty inexpensive. I mean, it's, they range from 75 to 150. And those are the regular base lit ones. And those are for if you want to practice or you want just a lightsaber that you're, mm. you don't break your bank for, or oh, if you don't do, if you break it, you won't feel as bad about breaking like one that's four dollars. So, like as a practice saver, I recommend both of those companies. Yeah. Did you ever go to uh Disney World or Disneyland to get one of the lightsabers they have there? I have not. I've never been to Disney or Florida or California. <laughs> it's okay, neither have I. I want to go. I think I'm going this year actually. So that'll be exciting if I get to go to do that. Uh, oh, that'll... I've I've heard they're kind of fragile and they kind of suck, but I kind of want to spend the money anyway just to say I did it. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah, I feel like building your own lightsaber also is an experience. It may kind of yeah. be like, but it's the experience more that you're paying for, and you kind of get a cool so so uh, souvenir that you made. Oh yeah, yeah. I I think I'm gonna do it still. All right, it's time for the giveaway. First of all, I wanted to thank you all for listening so far. Uh, for those who don't know, we are doing a giveaway for a Black Series figure, specifically Yavin Celebration Luke Skywalker. Uh, to enter, DM me on Instagram the keyword Ahsoka. The Instagram is at Cloud City Pod, and you can find that through my link tree if need be. For a second entry, though, uh, share the podcast on Instagram and tag us so we know you shared it. And I'll repeat, the keyword is Ahsoka. Enjoy the rest of the episode. So you were telling me about how you are just now starting Clone Wars. You're on season four. What have you thought of the Clone Wars so far? Oh, I love it. It's super, it's interesting. I, it's crazy because it's, it just gives more to the prequels. And I, since I already love the prequels, it adds onto it and it breaks off into more stories. And it's, it's crazy. (laughs) It's, it's Ahsoka's badass. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I just have to I just have to throw that out there. Like she may be young right now, and I kind of know she gets even more like super badass. <laughs> but no, she's she's attacking everyone. Like she she can hold her ground. She kind of reminds me of Anakin, though. <laughs> like yeah. that. I have to. I know you said don't do that, but I have to because I know what's going to happen. Type of situation. Yeah. Ahsoka is purposely written to be very arrogant and annoying at first so you can see her growth throughout the entire series and I think since you're in season four you've started to see that growth and that maturity start to rise in her um what episode of uh, season four are you on like where around are you um I believe it's been a few because I've been moving I haven't been able to watch it yet for a while um, I believe it was after the the fa- the light side dark side arc, like where they go and meet like the father, and then the light side and the dark side, like the son mm, and the dog. That might like, be right season at- three. Oh wait, what? Then wh- hang on, I gotta remember which part I end up because I did that part, and then there was another episode I watched where it was. Um, not it wasn't on it might have been I think it was Mustafar that they were on no was it was it, were they breaking on into a citadel yes yes the citadel that one that did was the last a, did you finish that arc yes 
how did you feel about her, the boy Echo? Um, I was so sad. It was so sad. Echo, Echo and Fives were before I got really attached to Ahsoka as a child. Like Echo and Fives were my guys. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why I attached myself so much to them, but I was attached it's to the point I was- where I put like in like my old childhood email. I had CT five 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 in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, so that's a- that's how attached I was. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was so I, bad. I remember watching Echo die because I would watch them every time they came out. And I, yeah. I was a devastated, hold on, it came out 2011. So I was 10. I was a devastated 10 year old. Oh, when Echo died. I couldn't imagine watching yeah. it when I was a kid. I would have cried. I mean, I cried anyways, but I would have cried harder because I would be a kid. But I saw him, I was like, no, don't run out in front. And then he did. And I was like, no, why'd you do that? Now you're dead. Oh, yeah. I've been watching oh. Clone Wars since the movie i saw the movie oh. in theaters it's so, been, yeah yeah that's how long I, i've been in this series because like i watched it when i was a kid but i don't remember much of it so i was like i have to revisit it because i'm on star wars tiktok so i need to at least up my game and remember what happened plus season seven was released too so i was like now i gotta even figure it out more season seven but i remember like watching it here and there when i was a kid because i had a little lunchbox that had the clone wars on it i, I missed that lunch that. that's that's yeah great. so what did you was... think about oh go ahead oh no i said it was great okay. <laughs> so fun. i wanted to know what you thought about uh ventress's arc in season three it was interesting with the it was it the sisters i'm yeah the I'm night bl- sisters the night sisters are scary firstly but <laughs> They are. They're terrifying. Like, I like them. They're badass. Oh, they are. Don't get me wrong. They are. Like, they're really badass, but they're scary. And it's just, like, the fact that they turned, like, Maul in that whole situation, too. Like, he went from being puny. Oh, I think it was, it was Savage. Yeah. It was some. Yeah. It made me upset. I was like, they just made a monster. And he's crazy. <laughs> Funny enough, the episode is called Monster. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> About that. Yeah. Man, season three's got really good episodes. Like, I, I pulled them up real quick. Uh, I mean, you've got the classic episode Supply Lines with uh, Master I'm Gonna Die. I'm Gonna Die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's such, a, it's such a classic meme at this point. But, uh. Master. I... oh you have so i you mentioned the light side dark side the the mortis arc what did you yes. think of that that was probably different than anything you've ever seen in star wars it was different and it it like messed with my mind i'm not even gonna lie mm-hmm. it was tripping me out and it put me on a roller coaster of emotions i was like When Ahsoka was bad, I really thought, like, she's going to kill them. Like, either she's going to die right here or she's going to kill one of them. But then I was like, it doesn't make sense because Revenge of the Sith and all that in season seven. But I was like, this is this hurts. Like, I was worried for Ahsoka. Yeah. (laughs) Myself to Ahsoka. I was like, I love her already. And then she turned like evil. And I was like, no. And then Anakin seeing everything that was going to happen. it I, I was so sad that his memory got erased. Because that could have stopped everything right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember. And it's really interesting how Ahsoka does die in that arc. She's the only character in Star Wars well, before the Rise of Skywalker for yeah. her to die and come back. Yeah. It, yeah so that was the first time we ever saw that within star wars and it was really i thought that was interesting and it's gonna be you're gonna have to pay attention in the future of ahsoka's stories um this is like a like one of the most pivotal parts of her character um is her connection with the daughter now so do you do you know the little like owl 
birds like owl thingies yeah. To, yeah so those now follow her there's one that follows her around and we think it's the mm-hmm. daughter we think the daughter Ooh. follows her around and so it's really interesting to keep an eye that, on that yeah i'm gonna keep my eye out when i start watching mm-hmm. it again i took that little break i might have to restart again like restart season four and remember everything or maybe watch some recaps yeah but i'm gonna out for that bird because i've seen it or i've seen it a few times like in memes and like ahsoka pictures and i'm like mm-hmm. oh that's for cute it has a meaning <laughs> i didn't know how to meaning meaning oh, yeah. but i'm do you even have you ever seen you've seen the mandalorian i'm assuming right yeah you can i saw even it. see the bird in the mandalorian yeah I really saw interesting it. i thought that was like dave filoni you son of a bitch nice touch <laughs> i he always likes to add and play with your emotions just a little bit I know I saw it and I was, everyone was going crazy over it on Twitter. And I was like, there's something that has to do with that bird. And I was like, it's cute. I just don't know what's wrong with the bird, but it has to do with the soga. So yeah, I'm a little bit behind. So I gotta, I gotta catch up. We have no idea what sh- the bird is exactly, but we think it's what the daughter is now. Yeah. Which would make sense. Mm-hmm. Because the daughter gave up her life to save Ahsoka. And wait, is that oh, that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But yeah. Have you started Rebels yet? No, not I, yet. I, I don't listen to anyone that says it's bad. Give it a chance. No. It's oh, so no, good. No. I'm going to watch it after I finish Clone Wars. Because that's what I've been seeing is watch Rebels after you finish Clone Wars. So I have to finish Clone Wars and then I got to start Rebels. Mm. You'll I already love a lot Hira. of familiar. You what? You have who? I already love Hera, or I think I said her name right. Hera. Yeah, yeah I yeah, love yeah, her. Yeah. Already. Hera. Mom, but... Yes, that's exactly what she. So Rebels has such a family vibe to it, where it's this band of misfits and they become a family. It's that's the kind of vibe it has. Um, it's one of the themes you see all throughout Star Wars. With you find your family. It's not you choose. It's like you choose your family um yeah but yeah Hera definitely plays the role of the mom Kanan the dad Kanan's my favorite character personally he, and then not as- in all Star Wars but he's my second favorite in all Star Wars with Ahsoka being above him but yeah and then as then Chopper, being, crazy. Chopper is our favorite war criminal yes um, favorite war criminal, favorite delusional insane droid <laughs> yeah uh, Sabine, Ezra, Zeb, a lot of the people, you either love them or you hate them. I like them. Um, but Ezra is kind of like annoying in the first two seasons, but you got to get past that. But he goes through yeah. a lot of growth. He has phenomenal growth and I'm excited to see what they do with Ezra in the future. But yeah, I'm- highly recommend Rebels. I know everyone's like, don't watch Rebels. I'm like, I'm going to watch it. I'm watching it. I don't care. They I are- want to see there are definitely aspects of Rebels that are better than Clone Wars, in my opinion. It's I keep going back and forth on whether I like Rebels or Clone Wars better. Right now, I might be saying Clone Wars, but it, next week it could probably be Rebels. Who knows? Yeah, they're like they're here for me. So yeah. So you saw it's, the man. Oh, you saw the Mandalorian. You like season one or two better? Ooh, I <laughs> I like season one better. Really? And yeah, that's uh, interesting. That's bold. <laughs> it is Actually, bold. You know, I don't know because I liked them both. I think I liked, I liked season one because it was like, I don't want this kid, but then he's like, I actually really love it. Like, I don't mm-hmm. want people to hurt him. But then in season two, it was like, this is my child. I don't care. I need to find the Jedi. And then he gets all sad and stuff because he has to give them away. And I'm, I don't know. I'm tied between them. I might, I think season two. I'll say I, season. Two. I think it's season two, for me personally, I should say. Season two is so much better, mainly because of the characters they add added to season two. I mean, you got Bo Tan. Um, Cobb Vanth is a oh. book character that I love. Um, you have Boba, Bo- Finnick, and Luke. I mean, yeah. When, when uh um Grogu did the like the call to a Jedi, who did you like after you saw that? 
when you thought, who did you think was going to show up or if anyone at all? So when I saw that, I, there was someone specific I was thinking of. Who was it? Cause I, at first I didn't think Luke, like Luke was the last person I was thinking of at the moment. Mm. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking Obi-Wan like, cause it was, it's cause Mandalorian mm. takes place. Oh, no, wait, no. That takes place after that. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> yeah. Ignore that. Not Obi-Wan. I'm thinking of something different. Um, I didn't think Luke, like I was thinking, I thought Ahsoka at first, like she was going to come even after mm-hmm. I thought she was just going to be like, Hey, I'm here. Hey, but, I'm here. <laughs> hey, I'm here. But I know I, I said didn't... no beforehand, but I'm back because I felt it in the force that I had to. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't. For some reason, Luke did not pass my mind until like I actually saw him, and then I was like, "Oh my god, Luke!" <laughs> for me, I said Ezra or Luke, but I felt like Luke was so far out of reach. I'm like, but how can they? How can they put Luke in the show? I felt like that was yeah. just such a not a stretch but it felt impossible until it happened yeah at the same time there were so many people being thrown around like i i shut down mace windu and cal kestis rumors i shut those down i was like no i i did think cal kestis that's who it was i was trying to pinpoint Mm -hmm. i was thinking it was going to be cal like i was so Mm -hmm. between soka and cal because all we see is him in Fallen Order. So we didn't really see much yeah. more. So I was thinking him. I didn't think Luke at all. Because I thought he too, he's too, he's too Gucci for all of this. <laughs> him and his Gucci boots. Yep, yeah. his, his Chanel boots that he Chanel. <laughs> He does not he does not have time for random little ones, little younglings. The reason I didn't think it was Cal was because it was like um cal kestis is the people who made it was he's ea's baby right um, yeah i don't i didn't think they throw him so far ahead in the timeline and make like let's say they make a fallen order too um i didn't think they would um take him out of that story and get rid of the stakes because yeah. if we're playing fallen order 2 i kind of want to feel like he could die at any moment yeah right I don't want to, oh, I'm safe. I'm going to live through this entire game. You know, that's never fun. Even, like, in the first one, I felt like Cal can die at any second. Because he does yeah, not he show does. Yeah. So, like, when Vader showed up for the first time in Fallen Order, I'm like, I'm dead. Like, I, this is where Cal dies. Nice. Like, <laughs> you're dead right here. Nothing more, nothing less. Like, you're versing Vader. You don't get to survive that. <laughs> no. And somehow he did. So did Sayer shocker yeah but yeah crazy i i think they are making a fallen order too as well so i i don't know when i know we're getting a open world star wars game i am excited for that i'm excited for the open world and i'm excited for the lego star wars skywalker saga yes i'm so excited for that one as well man that i keep delaying it and i keep getting upset about it did you play the other Lego Star Wars games growing up? Oh, yeah. I had them on the Wii, and I had – I don't know. I can't remember if it was the Game – I might not – no, I don't think it was the GameCube. But I had it on the Wii, and then I had it on the PlayStation 2. Yes, that's exactly what – oh, gosh. <laughs> my my, my uh, headphones are plugged. <laughs> yeah, I had it on the PlayStation 2. So I, I had the game, and I played it – all the time mm-hmm. till I couldn't play more, and then I'd replay it because I had all the characters, so I could go do the special stuff. Man, I'm excited for that game to be released. I I had the original two, so the one that was just original trilogy and the one that was just prequels. I had both of those on the PS2, and then I had Complete Saga on the Wii. Yeah, yeah, that's how it was. But and then, oh, then I had Lego Star Wars three on the Wii as well. Yeah. The Clone Wars one, oh. which is solid as well. Playing those was so fun. And then I saw it was getting remastered into Star War- the Skywalker saga. And I was like, I have to get it. I don't care if it's going to be a $60 PlayStation game. 
I need it. I don't care. I'll drop 60 for it. Yes. It's like <laughs> So you had a PS2. Did you ever play Battlefront 2 on the PS2? The original Battlefront 2. I did, but I didn't oh, wow. play it much. I it was mostly my older brother who played it and I kind of just watched and tried to play, but I was You're terrible. Like my at sis- it. So you were like my sister. I have yeah. I have a vivid memory of me always trying to get my sister to play Battlefront 2 with me. And we'd always play the most obviously Hero Assault. And she'd try to play me and she would get really upset every time I killed her. Yeah. And so if, if it was like a, I had to like walk this thin line of like, okay, I can't lose the game, but I can't bully her. Yeah. It was like, you sound exactly like my older brother. He couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't make it seem like he was purposely throwing the game for me but he also couldn't bully me to make me not want to play it like at all so it was like in between type of thing um i didn't remember playing porsche unleashed i think that was oh i had the little wii i i think it was ps3 or the wii the force unleashed i don't remember much but i remember watching my brother play it and Mm -hmm. it was a cool game too i sucked at that too it was fun for what it was. I, I'm i going to get crucified for saying this by some people, maybe. But <laughs> I don't think Starkiller should ever be canon. He's a I little think, OP. I think so, too. I think so, too. We're probably both. If you get butchered, I'll get butchered with you. <laughs> I don't. He just was super powerful. <laughs> Way too powerful. Yeah, I just don't think he has... There's no room for him within canon at this point. You've got so many other characters within that time period yeah. that they can focus on. And I think in a lot of ways, they took a lot of the aspects of Forced Unleashed characters and put them on some Rebels characters. Um, um, Rom Coda story kind of reminds me of Kanan's. Um, uh, Starkiller kind of reminds me of Ezra in some ways. Um, but yeah, I don't think if they were ever going to introduce star killer he would have had to been a really nerfed down inquisitor yeah which i would have been okay with but i know a lot of people wouldn't have been because he, he's not powerful enough he's star killer yeah, yeah. that's a whole that's a whole reason i don't like revan like i don't even know much about revan neither do i but, but i don't have any feelings towards him either but it's because of the like crazy fanboys that i hate revan like i don't even want (laughs) i don't want to know anything about him because i get bullied on the internet for not knowing revan or the people who do know revan are just complete asshats (laughs) i am aware of revan i don't know much about his character other than that he changes sides a couple times and that people want keanu reeves to play him yeah that's the part i know is i mean (laughs) Keanu Reeves played him but I still hate Revan because of every how it's he's projected by the fans oh it'd be too weird to see Keanu Reeves in Star Wars I'm I I, I, I don't it was like his Ewoker go kill his droid then hope you're dead (laughs) oh yeah you kill his you kill his Ewoker droid you're dead he will hunt you down across the galaxy there we go. Keanu Reeves can play a bounty hunter that just hunts people that hurt animals. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what Keanu Reeves needs to play. Nothing yeah. else. Just just the animal hunter, animal bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This need- is this is another hard question I'm going to ask you. All right. Top five characters of all time. You don't have to put them in any particular order. Just your top five. Obi Wan. I don't even think about that one. Obi Wan. I, mean, I, I think Obi Wan's been in every single person's top five. I'll have to check that, but I think he's been in everyone's <laughs> top five. Obi Wan, my number one. Um, my number two would be. I well, I'm just gonna say my top five, except one. I'm putting it out there. It's Obi Wan. That's my <laughs> one. <laughs> um, and then I love Leia. Leia's yes. my go girl. Love Leia. Leia, everything. Uh, as much as I, I love yet hate him, Anakin, Mm -hmm. like he's good, but he's bad and you're not supposed to like him. So like Anakin Vader, 
I'll just put him as one. Mm-hmm. Um, another one I really like, I love Ray. I'm gonna get hate for that. Love oh, Ray. Ray's, Ray's great. Ray Ray yeah. gets too much shit. She, she really does. Like, calm down. And then I would have, yeah, Luke would also be up there. So it's Luke, Leia, Luke, Leia, um, Ray, Obi Wan, and Anakin. If we were to ever see a live action Carrie Fisher again, like if they were to recast her, do you have anyone in mind you'd like to see play Leia? Probably her daughter. Yeah. Her, her daughter looks really familiar to her. So I'd love to see her daughter. I couldn't think of anyone else being Leia other than a Fisher. See, yeah, I feel the same way. I, I don't feel like anyone else could play her and it be right or if anyone does play her you need billy lord's um blessing right yeah that's yeah you can't i've seen people throw like millie bobby brown around which i'm like eh, no because mm. I, I, I she's too caught up in stranger things for me but yeah yeah it just it, that would feel forced if they did millie bobby brown because she's so famous with Stranger Things, and then mm-hmm. she's thrown it's like an actor you see in a lot of movies. Yeah, not like the Godzilla stuff now. And yeah, and I don't get me wrong, love her, but I don't see her as being someone in Star Wars. Yeah. Now I can see, I can definitely. Oh God, who he's also in Stranger Things, but he plays uh, Millie Bobby Brown's love interest, right? The kid with the long black hair. Do you know what I'm talking about? Finn Wolfhart. Yeah, I could see I him see. playing a young Kylo Ren. Uh, yeah, I yeah. can see that, and I don't think it would be for too forced. No, because he does look, he looks like a troubled teen. <laughs> <trying to> <laughs> just... <laughs> uh, and your dad used to be wanted, so yeah. mm-hmm. and your mom's the biggest rebel general ever, so rebel, rebel. yeah, you could see. He'd be a little bit troubled. I could see him being it. Yeah. Yeah. I can not think of anyone else to be a young Kylo Ren. I think fan castings are so much fun to do. Like, oh, I- oh my gosh. I have, I, I don't know if you've ever read any of the Star Wars novels, right? Um, you have? Uh, I've slightly dived in, but I haven't really dived in enough. So I, I I can't really speak on them. I've only read like a few pages. Oh, so a few no, pages. I, <laughs> um, I like listened to videos about them, but no, I don't know much. Don't okay. don't quote that. I yeah, don't. Yeah. So I I've done like fan castings of uh, a couple of the books. Um, they're so much fun to do. Um, the aftermath trilogy I did a fan casting of. Um, I. I thought it was solid. I, had, <laughs> I, I think it's I... good, but I don't know how other people feel about it. But I had like, yeah. I'm going to pull it up. I have, I think I have the list on my IMDb. Because I think that's how I made it. You check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here it is. Yeah, so I had like, uh, Joaquin Phoenix playing Wedge and Tilly's. I was like, I know who that is, but I know who Joaquin is, but I didn't know who the book character you is. You don't know who Wedge is? Wedge is in the movies. Oh no. He's one of the rebel pilots. <laughs> Hang on. Wedge, 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 Wedge. He's in the Rise of Skywalker as well. He's in the cameo in the, in the um, Millennium Falcon. Oh no, I'm going to get slandered. <laughs> Wedge uh, used to actually be one of my favorite characters. Fun fact. Uh, he's like one oh of those characters I latched on to as, as a young child. That I was like, yeah, this character is not relevant whatsoever in the story, but I'm going to latch on to him. Oh my goodness. I got to look that up. Give me one second to grab my laptop. This is something I'm going to figure out. All right. We're going to figure this out because, wow, I'm going to get slandered. <laughs> Oh, you'll be fine. Wedge, Wedge isn't that big of a character. I know he ha- Wedge has his fan base, and so does Biggs. 
I know bigs. I've there I've seen I've gotten onto weird sides of TikTok and I've gotten onto like bigs like thirst traps. Really? Don't get me. <laughs> There's an interesting version of TikTok that I've gotten onto. We all get on the interesting sides of TikToks. Oh yeah. Not Galaxy's Edge. I said wedge. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. I now figured, I don't feel. I figured Joaquin Phoenix would be like, yeah, you kind of look like him, and he's a big actor. I don't know. I just threw him in there. I was like, uh, yeah. Do you know who Carrie Washington is? Carrie Washington. No, but I can look her. I probably do. I don't know faces, or I know faces. I don't know names that well. Not Carrie Fisher. Dang it. Carrie Washington. Oh, yeah. I had her as uh, the main antagonist playing oh, Admiral Ray Salone. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. No. She's a big character in all the books. I have... You, you probably know who this is. You know Chandler Riggs? Yeah. I have him as a character in there. You know Snap Wexley from the sequels? Yeah. He plays... I had him playing young Snap Wexley. I could see that. And then I had I, Winona Ryder playing his mother. Yeah, that would. I I think Kerry Washington would be a really good Admiral Ray. Like I'm looking at like the fan art they've done of her. Yeah, I spent hours on this. I guess it's so many people. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I have Tommy Lee Jones as one of the antagonists as well. He plays... Mm-hmm. K and Men in Black. Oh yeah, yeah. I like you. He would make a great like just asshole Imperial Admiral. He plays an asshole really well. Like he's yeah. he just has the face of someone who looks like they're just gonna be an absolute dick to you the entire time. Oh yeah, <laughs> man. I have to change some of these because some of the actors I have in here died, <laughs> or like they got cast oh. in as like a. They got cast in different roles. Like, I have Bill Burr playing someone. I can't remember who. Ooh, <laughs> There's somewhere else. Someone- and then uh, I think Helen McCroy died. She played oh, uh, yeah. Malfoy's mother in Harry Potter. I had her playing an admiral. You know what's criminal? Like, this is the last one I'll talk about. But you know what's criminal? Sigourney Weaver is not in Star Wars. She's in so many sci-fi things, but she's not in Star Wars. Yeah, you like, think that would be a spot for her, would right. be there. So I was like, so, make her a rebel admiral. I could see, and this one is probably, I've seen this go around, Um, Tom Hiddleston as Thrawn. Yeah. I've seen it. I don't hate it. I've, I've had to look at it up to make sure I had like the names right. I'm Googling this. Makes- I, there's probably fan art of this. Yeah, look. Ron, up Tom. Or. Middleton. I can also see Benedict as him. Benedict, I could also see. Which, I mean, that'd be cool um, to have them both in Star Wars as well as Marvel, because I like them both. <laughs> I don't know about Tom Hiddleston, Admiral Thrawn. The face structure is kind of weird. But I guess you don't have to, to worry about the face too much. You just got to be a complete menacing person. Benedict Cumberbatch Throne. Let me see. I feel like Benedict would be... Oh, my better. God. The face. I, yes. Better than Tom Hiddleston. I want it so bad. But I think... It'd be cool to get alive. I've heard for the Ahsoka series that they're bringing Thrawn into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're gonna have to because they dropped his name in the Mandalorian season two, and we're getting the yeah. series. So I think that's gonna be a series where we get a lot of characters that we've only seen in animation go yeah. into live action. So I think we might get like Ezra, Sabine, yeah, um, uh, and Thrawn. I think those are three shoe ins that we're gonna get. Um, because like big characters from the animated series so i feel like they would 
they need to at least tie up some ends because they're all loose a little bit right now. Yeah, I definitely recommend if you don't get to Rebels before Ahsoka comes out, don't watch Ahsoka until you watch Rebels. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. There's going to be some huge tie-ins for Ahsoka that'll be really important for her character in this series. I can tell just from the concept art or like the logo. Um, there's a really crucial episode in season four towards the very end with Ahsoka. And the same imagery from that episode is used in the logo. So I'm like, ooh. And this was like a really good episode too. It's like one of the best in all the Rebels. So is it the battle? When she's fighting um, Vader, with that is it's not that episode, but it include it, they it, that fight is in this episode, but it's not this episode. If that makes sense, you'll it'll make sense when you watch it. Yeah, it's, it'll, it's yeah. I don't know if you've heard the world between worlds. I think I've heard it, but I don't know expanding mm-hmm. from that. Yeah, so it's a really interesting. It's probably. It kind of introduces a, a, a form of time travel to Star Wars, but it's really weird, but it's really cool, and they do it really well. So it's not something oh, it, that could ever be abused. So, like, there's not – no one's going to go back in time and murder – you slave Anakin, right? That's, yeah. It, can't can't yeah. exactly go that far, and it's monitored, or at least unable to be yeah. messed, messed with. Mm-hmm. It's a really fun episode, but, yeah. So – we are running out of time. So is there anything you would like to plug where the good people of this podcast can find you? Uh, so I have a TikTok, which is Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H dot E-M-P. And then I have an Instagram, which I'm more on because TikTok is not being my friend at all right now. Um, oh, no. my Inst- I know I have 48,000 followers on TikTok, but my views my videos, I have to post. Ooh, I have to post them about three times before they actually get any type of views, mm-hmm. and they I get like two thousand if I'm lucky. If that's a good day, really? Yeah, if that's a good day, oh, usually no. eight hundred. If I like eight hundred views in total, I'm like that's not fun. <laughs> but um, my Instagram is Hannah's with an S at the end, so H A N N A H S dot E M P, and that's where I post a lot of my tiktoks or new videos because mm-hmm. that we'll actually provide, gets- yeah we'll provide leak or we'll, no, we'll provide links down in the description for all that but yeah uh you guys can find me on twitter at brendan is dumb you guys can find me on tiktok as well at brendy the jedi and you can find this podcast on instagram at cloud city pod hannah thank you so much for coming on this was fun it was. Well, you're I'm, a splendid person, we, and you should come back on when we, if if I do like episode reviews or something like that, uh, something I'm thinking about doing. If people are down, yeah, I gladly jump on that. Or if like for like the Kenobi series, if you're doing episode reviews on that, I will jump right onto that. I <laughs> I will write that down so I don't forget. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much for coming on. This was really fun. You can just put Hannah for if any you ever need another guest because it's super fun talking to you. Super fun talking about Star Wars people. (laughs) Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of Cloud City Conversations. Our artwork is by Nick Dakota Art. Our music is by Joshi. And you can find all the links in the podcast description. Thank you.